Um, if you haven't seen season one, just stop watching this. Um, so then, but also, then come back. But then okay. come back. Forget what I just said. It is so nice to be sitting down with you in Austin, in Austin. Texas, where you have recently decided to call home. Yes. What was the impetus for that? We just wanted a place that we could, you know, call home and really, you know, put the flag down. But more importantly, uh, my incredible wife is a, a Texan. Our first date was in Austin. Howdy, y'all. I yeah. love to hear that. So what did that first date look like? So I flew in. I was actually doing Sons of Anarchy at the time, and I literally went right from set to the airport. Romance uh, Yeah, alert. yeah. And I had the fake tattoos on my head and everything. Really? Yeah. And I had never been to Austin. It was like one of those days where it was like 196 degrees here. She was incredibly late to come and get me. She doesn't want to tell people that. Oh, we're going to throw a little shade. Yeah, incredibly late. I didn't know what was going on. And then we went and walked around. You know, we had an amazing night. It sounds like Here you we are married right. with two kids, so things went well that <laughs> so night. So it sounds like you enjoyed Austin. <laughs> yeah, and did. you guys had a fantastic it first date. pretty great. Yeah. So you've got two kids under five and three dogs. A day in the life at your house, I'm yeah. sure, is a wild ride in the oh. best way possible. For nobody. Nobody <laughs> wants to do it. <laughs> it sounds like also the surface of the sun does not bother you. No. Like living here in the heat, you would take that. Let me, let me explain to you. I went to LA for 15 years. Yeah. And then I went back in New York for four years. It, it's like minus nine degrees, like for a while. It's brutal. Like day after tomorrow, Jake Gyllenhaal cold for no, like months. Thank you. We just finished Sons of Anarchy. The first night we got there, it snowed and we were like, this is amazing, magical, like mm -hmm. Home Alone type episode. Like right. this is so cool. It never stopped. <laughs> it's super hard when you come with like the carnival that we do of <laughs> kids and dogs in the business I'm in. It used to be you can only live in LA and now it's kind of, you got to just live somewhere where the industry is thriving. Sounds like you really prioritize quality of life. Without and doubt. there's a good one here. Let's talk Luke Cage. Yeah. Such an exciting series. Yeah. We're season two, Spill. What yeah. can we expect? Listen, the way season one ended, no uh, Marvel show had done what we'd done, meaning where the villains, myself and Mariah Dillard, who's played by Alfred Woodard, uh, you know, were standing at the top as the victors and Luke was being carted off to jail. That's the end of season one. By the way, spoiler alert, if you, we're talking <laughs> yeah. about season two. Hashtag so spoiler alert. Just stop alert. it. Um, if you haven't seen season one, just stop watching this. Um, so then, but also, then come back. But then okay. come back, okay. right, finish. Forget what I just said. But then season two, we kind of pick up with that. And now we have to see how these two villains exist in this power struggle. And then we get to learn everything about them. And, yeah. you know, we do some things that have never been done, you know, in Marvel. I'm so incredibly proud of the show because we go to places that a lot of people don't go to. And the villains and heroes, the lines get right. blurred a lot. Yeah. And I think that, you know, especially with my character Shades, you really, people just really kind of are ambivalent of like, oh my God, I love him, I but supposed I'm to supposed feel? to hate him. Yes. And, and uh, that was a really cool thing to do. For people who are just discovering the show on Netflix, how do you describe Shades and what drew you to him? <sighs> oh man, complicated, super violent, but with a code in his violence. He's kind of this crime boss with a moral compass in a way. His moral compass is just way different. And then you get to dig into like, the loves of his life and it just humanizes him and it and it gives layers and layers and layers to his character so it becomes like four dimensional my legacy is right here palm's paradise you really want out sell it to me and you get to work alongside such an incredible mm. cast and crew, it sounds like. How has that helped you grow as an actor? I've been so fortunate. I've been doing this 18 years, not to age myself. I'm still very young, guys, so just calm down. I he started, said eight. started when I was one. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> really, Sons of Anarchy was like going to college for me. You know, that was kind of my first introduction into like, oh my God, like people know you outside of your friends and family. Mm. I was at that point working alongside people that I adored and watched growing up and I just adored them not just as actors but as human beings and then I move into Luke Cage and it's like Mahershala Ali and, yeah. and Alfre Woodard and I'm working with these people who are just Alfre's a legit legend I mean the amount of Oscars the Emmys she's been doing this 40 years but Alfre is an incredible human being 
besides being an actor. And I've always fancied myself as I'm a father first, I'm a husband first, I'm a human being first. And acting is just super cool. I love that I do it, but yeah. it is by no means defines me. Being a person is everything. So I gravitate towards the actors who do it, but they're people. Mm -hmm. And Alfre is one of those. Same with Mahershala in the first season. So I've just been super fortunate. It's just like between action and cut, you're just having so much fun. Yeah. It's almost like running a marathon. It's like the training's the hard part, and then when you actually go running, it's kind of easy, which is... I don't know what kind of marathons you're running. I'm not sure that's my definition of fun yet, <laughs> but I get what you're saying. I get the metaphor. The training's the hard part. Yes, exactly. <laughs> How can your story inspire other people who are going after something they really want to be a part of? So mine is extremely peculiar. I don't kind of wish it upon anybody. The way I grew up was you were basically defined by money and power. You know, my heroes weren't baseball players and basketball players. My heroes were hustlers. You know, people who were on the street and people who were doing what they were doing. It was really when I wouldn't do that, I would say, I went towards I just somehow, I had a friend who was in an acting class and I was like, this seems like a good way to spend a couple of <laughs> nights a week. I was drawing all the time. I wanted to, my dream was to be a comic book artist, wow. which is really full circle now. Yeah. And somehow, you know, I got cast in some independent film that never came out. And I went, okay, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it, do it, like I do everything in life. And I just inundated myself with the history of filmmaking and television. And I moved out to LA and I did what everybody else does. You know, I started as an extra. I waited tables, I was bar backing, I was a bus boy. I did whatever I had to do to free up my schedule and I just kept hustling and grinding and going at it. It's very easy to get distracted. It's very easy to get caught up. And I was just very focused and yeah. knowing what I was gonna do. And it led to Sons. And, uh, and, and really I say like, yes, I did 40 jobs before that, but it led to that. And I worked my way up from really having one line, I think, in the first episode to being however the last few seasons were, which yeah. were incredible for me. And I haven't stopped since, so I've been fooling them for a while. <laughs> but that story, I think, can be so powerful to hear. Yeah. The, what can happen with persistence and hard work and passion about something you genuinely are interested in. For sure. You truly got to want to do it. Yeah. And you got to want to do it for the right reason. So I'm just constantly searching for projects like Cage where I get to not just take a character and play it, but where I take a character and I create an entire life for him and, and really he becomes like almost like a friend of mine. Outside of these projects that you work on that are so amazing, what's bringing you joy right now? Oh man, you know, I, having two young sons, even today, as crazy as this sounds and as weird as this sounds, I was like literally brushing my teeth. The cane is watching how I brush my teeth yeah. and I was like super, careful to like, cause I'm so aggressive with the Sonic camera and you're not supposed to be. And I was just like, <laughs> hold it there. Cause he's gonna one day. And I'm like, just try to do it normal. Because I knew That's that he sweet. was watching yeah, me. Yeah, cause you're always on and you're always a role model yeah. once you become a father. So I know that I'm kind of setting that example for him. So that is the most interesting thing in my life. You know, and really just being here and, and digging this town and figuring it out. Well, amid that busy lifestyle, thanks for carving out some time for us. Cheers to you. Thank really you appreciate so much. it, Theo. It's a real pleasure.